Hi guys, welcome to your August 2021 readings. If you would like to see the full reading, you can become a member by clicking the join button under the, under the video, or you can go over to Patreon. All of that information is in the description box. You can also go to Vimeo and get the readings individually, or you can get them as a package deal. Another a couple ways that you can um, support me while I'm healing, uh, we're having a couple of benefits this month. One is going to be on August 8th. We're going to have three tarot readers live on the Fearless Intuition channel. It'll be $30 a question. You can pick your tarot reader as well. Also, um, we're having a benefit on August 15th, astrology benefit. There's going to be four really amazing astrologers talking about um, all, all sorts of different things, synastry and composite charts, planetary engagement, Saturn and Pluto. Um, it's going to be really, really fun, and you get to ask them your own astrology questions. If you would like to get the virtual tickets to that private event, you can go to my website, fearlessintuition.net, or go directly underneath in the description box and reserve your ticket there for the virtual event. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful August, and enjoy your readings. Bye. Hey there, Virgos. We are back with the readings. Uh, I'm really glad that I was able to start at least by August because I don't know it's always kind of a special time to be able to do the readings for you guys for me during our season it always just seems like something special and even though we're still in Leo season we'll be in Virgo season before you even know it and our planet Mercury We'll talk a little bit about astrology, but this is mostly going to be intuitive. Um, our planet Mercury is going to be um, bouncing around, like aspecting every single planet. Like it's going to be so busy throughout August, Mercury will be. Even starting on August 1st, there's a Mercury Cassini in Leo. Um, and it's opposite Saturn. So we're like starting August off with a bang with your ruling planet. Mercury will be in Virgo on the 11th. So um, even if you don't have your Mercury in Virgo, it's still gonna feel like so much easier to navigate things. August is gonna move like this. Like there is no slow time in August. And um, Jupiter being back in Aquarius that happened at the actually it's happening tomorrow since I'm doing this on July 27th um, Jupiter goes back into Aquarius on the 28th but with Jupiter back in Aquarius helping Saturn um, with his role right now which is to basically get humanity to sit up and pay attention to what's going on because things need to change and he's going to do in the harshest way and a lot of that is going to be very restrictive for a lot of people if they're not ready for it. <sighs> okay. So, <laughs> oh, there's one that's hiding. Interesting. Okay. So we have the nine of wands was the first card that came out. We have the two of pentacles, seven of swords. I had the Ace of Cups, and hiding behind the Ace of Cups, I didn't even realize, is the Page of Pentacles. So we're going to keep him there. I already know what that one is. And Knight of Cups and Page of Wands. Okay. So the biggest message here the nine of wands is telling you that you don't have to fight anymore this is a time of surrender this is a very big time of deep surrender considering what we have been through um in the last four months i don't know a virgo that didn't go through something this summer and let's even start all the way back into april I don't know a Virgo, even a Virgo that I just know who he watches my channel. Like I saw that he was in a terrible motorcycle accident um, on Instagram at the same time that I found out I had a blood clot in my brain at the same, I mean, just so just thing after thing, after thing, after thing, after thing. And it just kept on. And even if it wasn't that ser those serious types of things for you, it was something, 
right? So the nine of wands is telling us that we don't have to, we can, this, it's a time of surrender. We've got to surrender. And here's why. There's a lot of things, decisions that we're going to have to make. And that seven of swords right there, you're going to feel like you're being placed in situations where you want to do the fight or flight thing, like the survival mode, right? It may have to do with funds. It may have to do with money. It may have to do with um, just not wanting to particularly, particularly be where you are right now. But you're going to have to make some decisions. And the Seven of Swords here, um, to me, the Seven of Swords is like fight or flight mode. Because he's literally running away with as much as he can that's his, even leaving some things behind. You know, it could mean that somebody's not being very honest with you too, or you feel like somebody's not being very honest with you. So that can mean a couple of things. But here's the thing, the remedy. You've got to give back to yourself. This Ace of Cups on the Page of Pentacles makes me feel like the universe is giving you this opportunity, this surrendering opportunity for you to not worry about things, for you to not overthink everything and not overstress stuff. And you're not giving back to yourself as much as you should be, right? The, the page of pentacles is like a very small offering. It's like the smallest offering you can give. And it could be that you're feeling like you're not getting enough, right? A lot of times when we feel like we're not getting enough from other people, that just means that we need to turn inwards and we need to start giving back to ourselves. So, um, and the, and for me, the Ace of Cups is about self-care and I feel like the universe is just providing this opportunity for you to surrender and say, like the universe is like tell, trying to tell you, I've got this, I've got things handled. You don't have to take care of it this time. The Knight of Cups and the Page of Wands. I do feel like somebody's going to be coming in and offering you something or somebody's going to be coming in and bringing you some really good news, something that you've been waiting for. And that's um, probably the light at the end of the tunnel, <laughs> if, you, if that's the way that you want to put it. The light at the end of the tunnel is this feeling like, but see, here's the thing, though, is it even if somebody comes in and offers you this, you know, brings you some good news or offers you something or... Like around, if it's a, if this is at the end of August around your birthday and somebody's giving, you have to be open to receive, right? We don't want to be the page of pentacles in that kind of situation. We want to be the queen of, or the king of pentacles in that kind of situation. That's the difference. So that's where that ace of cups comes in is like, if you're going to get this offer, you need to really believe that you deserve it, right? No fight or flight here. Seven of swords. You got to, you got to stick it out because you deserve that, right? 